Hello and welcome to another Science Man digital lesson. Today we're going to look at acceleration, literally in the sense of what does it look like in real life and what does it look like on graphs. Now if you've been to a drag strip you've probably seen uh, vehicles with extreme rates of acceleration. In fact top fuel dragsters have the greatest acceleration of any vehicle on the planet, even faster than uh, rocket cars and uh, the space shuttle. But maybe it would be better to understand acceleration with something that's moving a little bit slower, perhaps a cute kitten. Now suppose on your way to school you see a, uh, a kitten uh, across the field and uh, this kitten starts moving towards you. So uh, the kitten's going to move across the field and on our screen it would be uh, moving from left to right. So if the kitten moves in such a way that it covers the exact same amount of distance every unit of time, that means that that kitten is not accelerating at all. It's traveling at a constant velocity. So, in other words, an object that covers the same amount of ground every unit of time is not accelerating. But if that kitten is very excited and covers more and more ground every unit of time as it travels toward you, then that kitten is accelerating. In other words, any object that covers a changing amount of ground per unit of time is accelerating. So if we take that a step further and examine this in real life uh, in an actual experiment, what would that look like? What would that acceleration motion look like on a position time graph? Well, here I have a position time graph on the left and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cart and I'm going to move this cart in a, uh, in, a, in a motion that goes up this ramp and then it's going to come back down. So it's going to go up a slope and back down the slope and it's going to do that in front of, uh, of a motion sensor and if you, any of you have used these motion sensors before you know they're really great at tracking the uh, position of an object. So I'm just going to set that on my track just out of the uh, range of the camera and then I'm going to put my cart on the ramp and then what we're going to do is we're going to start collecting some data and we'll give the, uh, the cart a little push. Well that looks great. Let's try it again with an even bigger push. Well, that's not bad at all. Maybe one more time. There, some beautiful data. So, we'll just put our cart aside, and then we'll get rid of our camera, and take a bigger look at our data. And I think I really like this bit of, um, a bit of dark green data here, so I'm just going to uh, get rid of my other data sets and we'll examine the uh, the last run that we took and you can see from this uh, from this motion on the position time graph that we have a, a curve now you may have learned in your physics studies that if you want to calculate the velocity of an object on a position time graph what you need to do is you need to take the slope of the line, that is the amount that the position changes over the amount of time. In other words, velocity is equal to distance over time. Um, but that's a little bit tough for a line that's curving. The line that we're looking at right here is, is straight, so it really doesn't matter where we put our, our slope calculation and 
in math class you may have heard that referred to as rise over run. It really doesn't matter where we do our rise and our run, our change in distance, uh, change in position, and change in time. Um, for a, a curve like this, um, it's more challenging. Uh, what we really need to do is, if we're going to be able to tell if this is uh, accelerating or not, uh, and remember, if, if the uh, amount of distance that's being covered is changing every unit of time, um, then the object's accelerating, we really need to take little snapshots of the uh, velocity of the object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a linear fit, and really what that does is give me gives me a tangent line and I can do that at any point on this curve so what I'm gonna do is just apply a tangent line right here at the beginning of the motion right when I push the cart and if we look really closely we can see that the slope equals 0.379 so that's 0.379 meters per second now if we take that same kind of type of calculation a little bit further up the slope we see that the slope calculation is now 0.146 that's 0.146 meters per second that's a lot less than our calculation down here so obviously our velocity is changing so if velocity is changing that is a really good uh, hint that we have uh, acceleration occurring. We can also tell just by our um, uh, the shape of our our graph because as this graph uh, as this line on this graph curves, it's obvious that the position in our position being uh, measured here or, or noted on our our scale, the position is changing less and less every unit of time. And again, if we go back to our, our kittens, we know that if the position is uh, the, um, the amount that uh, of ground covered every unit of time is changing, then we've got acceleration. Now, in this case, we have a curve downward. This is a downward curve. If we flip this curve over, we'd have an, an upward curve. There's only two types of curves that we can have, upward and, and, and downward. Um, that means that for the first part of the motion where the cart went up the slope, that there was less and less ground being covered. So what we've got there is, is classic slowing down. Now some people will call that deceleration and then that's not exactly incorrect, but it's it's good to call but it's probably better to call it negative acceleration in other words a curve downward on a position time graph is negative acceleration um, and the reason for for calling it negative acceleration is as you can see we've also have got negative acceleration on the other part of our our motion as the cart moved down the ramp back towards the motion sensor it gained of velocity in the negative um, direction back towards the reference point. So uh, to make a long story short, slowing down going forward and speeding up going backward are both negative acceleration. Now we can even take a, a quick look at what those look like on a velocity time graph. What would this motion look like on a velocity time graph? So I'm just going to zoom in on that area. Here's the motion for our our uh, moving cart. Just zoom right in on that area. And there's the matching uh, there's the matching data for these two. And you can see that our curve on the position time graph is a nice straight line. A nice straight line on our velocity time graph and that indicates uh, to us that the velocity is changing at a very regular rate so we can probably refer to this as a constant negative acceleration and we can even do what we did before 
and uh, apply a linear fit to this. And since we have uh, meters per second in the units, okay, velocity of course is meters per second and time is in seconds, we would be, if we could did a slope calculation, we'd ta be taking the change in velocity over the change in time. So that would be meters per second divided by seconds, which gives us the uh, units for acceleration, meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. And you can see in this calculation we've got, there's our negative number, negative because it's negative acceleration, this is negative 0 0.397 meters per second squared. So to sum up, when you're looking at acceleration, whether it's, uh, you know, cute little kittens, or whether it's uh, moving carts, doesn't matter, you need to look for, um, the need to look is, it, is the velocity um, changing every, uh, every unit of time? Is the amount of ground covered changing every unit of time? If those things are true, then you're probably looking at acceleration. So, thanks again for tuning in to a scienceman.com digital lesson. I hope to see you again for another lesson soon.